So the thing that we get tripped up on is that it's easy for us to see value and it's easy for us to see color. It is hard for us to see value and color simultaneously. That's the loop. So what we've been working on is first we started with black, white, amber, and sienna. We added yellow ochre. I am, I'm organizing these in a way that's dark to light value wise right now. And what that means is that what we started with was varying levels of gray that we could neutralize or warm. Yeah, I'm going to put these up and email them to you. Okay. Um, right. So we're, we're moving in realms of temperature that is value forward, right? And then we started saying, okay, we're going to introduce a color to this, where now we have a black that serves as a blue, we have a burnt sienna that serves as a red, and we have a yellow ochre that can serve as a yellow. So we have what's now an earth tone muted primary palette. All right. The thing about this is that there will be places where when you put this color, it feels out of place. And then there's places where when you put this color in, it fits it. So the thing that we get tripped up on is that it's easy for us to see value and it's easy for us to see color. It is hard for us to see value and color simultaneously. All right. So what we have to do is see that when I put this color into a place like this, I can understand now that that yellow ochre sits in a range where anything that then becomes darker than it it's a lightning agent now. It will change the color, but it's a lightning agent. Anything that sits lighter than it whether it be from the sienna, whether it be from the yellow ochre itself, or whether it be from the black and any combination in between, that yellow ochre will darken any of those colors, All right? And so what we talked about this morning was that we have, in this case with four colors, any four colors in the world, doesn't have to be these four, you're gonna have two light colors, two dark colors, two warm colors, two cool colors. So we have a light cool, a light warm, a dark warm, a dark cool. Anytime I need to change the color that I'm working with, I can darken and cool it simultaneously, darken and warm it simultaneously, darken it simultaneously by mixing those two together. I neutralize temperature, I just move value. I can lighten it and cool it, lighten it and warm it, or I can lighten it. And so a great example of this would be if I had yellow ochre and I wanted to darken and warm it, I can just add burnt sienna. If I want to darken it, I can add both of them. If I want to lighten it and cool it. I can just add the white. If I want to lighten it, I would add less white, or in this case, think of it as adding yellow ochre and white to my yellow ochre. And if I want to dull the color, 
I can get a combination of all of the colors, mix it down to the proper value. <coughs> The way to figure out if it's the proper value, if you touch it, if it looks like you put ink on it, it's too dark. If it looks like you bleached it, it's too light. If it kind of just falls into the thick couch, right, then it's the right value. They're the same value, so it does not matter how much or how little I add to it. I'm just dulling it, right? That's all of color mixing that you ever need to know, right? Where it gets complicated is when we start adding more colors in. This is where it gets So I have <laughs> like a cad red, basically, cad red light. I think this is technically naphthol red. And a cad yellow lemon, which is going to be like a cad yellow light or a um, Hansa yellow light, things like that. I need to think of these in that realm of light, dark, warm, cool. It's a red, so my gut reaction is to say this red goes with this red. If I think of it in terms of dark and light, warm and cool, I think this red is much more like the warm light mm -hmm. than it is the warm dark because if I put it next to the warm dark or put it on top of the warm dark, it's like bleach. Very chromatic bleach, but bleach nonetheless. And in that same way, if I was to look at this yellow, I kind of liken it in this case to the titanium white, and it's sort of an addition to the light cool because this has definitely got less heat less in the oven temperature, so to speak, relative to this yellow and this red. So we're kind of reorganizing the way we compare colors. Alizarin crimson, great crimson blood red. That's how we think about it in our head. That's how we understand it in terms of like our color theory in grade school on the circular color wheel, right? It is a dark cool. It is more like black on this palette than anything else. And, and I associate it that way in the way that you'll see Chris mix his palette. There are places where, say like this cad yellow light or this cad red light, there are places there where he'll put it often in heavy amounts. There's places where he'll put it in small amounts and there's places where he will never put it because this cad red is never going to be a light cool on this palette. <laughs> It can be a light warm, and it can even be a light neutral maybe. It's never gonna be as cold as say the black and the white mixed into a light pale cool blue, right? Does that make sense? Um, what? What? Huh? Huh? <laughs> so, so what we talked about at all. So when it comes to kind of organizing our color mixing and understanding stuff now, I have, I have more options but they're all for the same approach to moving color. Do I want it lighter or darker? Do I want to lean it warmer, lean it cooler? Maybe you start thinking, do I want to lean it more yellowish? Do I want to lean it more bluish? Do I want, right? Like you start kind of thinking about it that way, but it's always first off, I have any given color. Let's say I have this color right here and I want to lighten that color, but I want to keep the warmth on it. I could lighten it. This one. I could lighten it with yellow ochre, and I've seen what that can do. But the yellow ochre is maybe even cooler than the burnt sienna to begin with. So it's like, oh, that doesn't quite have the same heat to it. Okay, well I could use this red and lighten it, but oh. <laughs> It's kind of more of a color change and it's not really changing the value so much. It's maybe lightened it a half a step, a quarter step. Okay, I can use the white, but I know the white's... White is blue. So when I really, really start to thin this out. With that. 
that. Look at how cool that starts going. It's blue. Blue it, man. Right. That's white, but it's not. <laughs> so, all right, so I know that's gonna cool it. So maybe I can add that white to this red. But I don't know if that's kind of getting us in the direction we're going. What happens if we revert back to the mean? Let me get this color back to where it was. What if I add the yellow? Because it's going to lighten it. That's starting to work, right? If it too cool, maybe I add it to that red and I mix an orange. And we find that we're actually getting close to that color to begin with, but it's more chromatic because it's a simpler mixture, right? So, so what we're boiling down to here is we're starting to find that there are multiple options to lighten or darken a color. And as we add more colors to the palette, we'll find that these colors just naturally sit in the mosaic of color mixing possibilities um, on their own, out of the tube or as two color mixtures. So I know that like yellow ochre and burnt sienna I can, I can lighten that color by taking the cad yellow red light, the cad red light, and mixing a yellow orange. I, I blew it, I blew it, <laughs> I blew it. Blew it, yeah, I mixed the stronger one in first. Damn you. Color mixing 101 error. <laughs> Inject. Oh, explain that inject small amounts of light into the dark light into the dark so i started adding the red first and then realized i had not nearly enough yellow right if i add the yellow in um then i'll be able to see all right we've got this color we need to move it that way it's too chromatic so i can darken it and start to come up with a color and add a little bit more of this red in I'm gonna add a little bit more of this neutralizing dark in I can start to come up with a color that starts to look like a lighter version of this color. I could also have a color that is out of the tube that starts to get me closer to that maybe it's like, maybe I inject a little bit of yellow into that, right? So I'm showing these things. Chris is gonna lay out a palette that really directly takes this kind of information and puts it to how do I mix what I see and just mix what's necessary for what I see. But if we can think about the fact that there are colors that are gonna be darker, there's colors that are gonna be lighter, there's colors that are gonna be warmer, there's colors that are gonna be cooler, and those two properties combined are gonna sort of dictate the kind of colors I should look towards when I need to change something coming out of the tube or out of a simple mixture, right? I need something lighter and cooler. There's only a couple of options that really make sense on this palette. If I have a really dark color and I need something lighter and cooler, there's some more options, but not that many more, right? So then it becomes easy to understand that there's, you know, there are times for the whisk, there's times for the ladle, there's times for the, <laughs> you know, the, there's times for the peeler. They're not always used at the same time, right? Does that make sense? Yeah.